Hello, welcome to another profound experience of poetry. This is a series of conversations that I'm having with people that I want to talk to as a kind of uh, bonus feature of the profound experience of poetry book club. Um, my name is Lucy and I edit profound experience and I edited uh, Shabby Dollhouse as well and wrote some books. I don't know. It's not about me. Um, today I'm talking to the poet Nadia de Vries and maybe you can introduce yourself Nadia. Uh, sure. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Nadia de Vries. Um, I'm a Dutch poet writing in English and I live in Amsterdam and I've written two books, uh, Dark Hour and uh, I Fail to Swoon, which ju just came out um, last week, actually. And uh, they're published by uh, Dostoevsky Wannabe in the UK. Yeah. Um, how does, can you tell me about the process of writing this new book? Have you been writing it? Like, like what happened? When did you do this? <laughs> um, so Dark Hour came out in 2018 and it's basically a, a best of, of the, the poems that I used to self-publish. I think, you, yeah, you maybe been at the time when I had like three chapbooks that I like self-published in the little bags and stuff. So that book is like, like five years of poems from like my, my juvenilia. And this is what I wrote um, after. I started writing these in 2018 and I think I was a bit more focused or I kind of wanted a theme because with the other ones, because there were chat books and different kind of projects that came before, I kind of wanted a project for this one. And 2018 was a weird year for me because uh, I just ended like a really long relationship and I shaved my head and, um, and I moved and all kinds of things happened. And I thought, okay, so what, where am I right now? And like one of the things that I did in 2018 was I started saying yes to all kinds of experiences that I hadn't had before for whatever reason. And I ended up in like really, like really intense situations sometimes, like, like not bad in a bad way necessarily, but it was really interesting to me, like psychologically, like what happens when you kind of go with everyone else's flow. And a lot of the poems are about that, about um, particularly encounters with men, not, not necessarily sexual, but also kind of them needing or asking something. And also about houses, because I lived in, um, how do you say this in English? Like a group of people like living together in like a shared house. Mm -hmm. And that combination of experiences to be kind of, meeting lots of people like in my own time, but then to also have like my own private space be shared with strangers, essentially, um, that uh, led into this book. Oh, nice. And so, but if you started writing it in 2018, what, what's what been happening since then? Because it just came out, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so actually the book was supposed to come out last year, but of course with COVID it was delayed. And I guess that was also good, but because I think especially for poetry, it's really good to do like readings and performances. So I'm happy it's come out now. Um, yeah, now that I can actually share it with people like physically as well. But so I, start, I started writing it in 2018 and then I also wrote poems in 2019. And it wasn't until early 2020 when I started actually compiling the final manuscript. But it is funny, actually, because a lot of the poems, because they're about houses and about like a feeling of being trapped or about like talking furniture or whatever, it kind of, some people have said to me, like if I would like share an individual poem, oh, this is about being quarantined, right? I'm like, no, no, this is a pre-COVID mm -hmm. book. So ah, that's, yeah. Interesting. I feel like your work is so um, concise and the poems are often very short. Is that like, do they start off that way or do they start longer and you, you whittle them down? Like, how does that, how does that happen? Well, a bit of both. Like sometimes a poem just comes into like four lines and I think, okay, I like this combination of lines or I like this. I mean, a lot of the poems, sometimes they're, they're a bit centered around a punchline, for example, and then I work with that. But I think the majority of the time it is indeed, I, I have like a lot of notes and I think, oh, this is the poem. And then I look at the, it again, like eight months later, and I think, no, like two thirds of it has to go and I have to change the title and then it makes sense. Because usually how I write is, 
I don't really write in sessions or like I have to I have to work so I can just kind of be like hmm, today is a day for writing in the garden or whatever so usually I went out on my way somewhere um well the, the previous years I, I, I can kind of I have more time to write now but usually I would write when I was on my way to somewhere and I would see like a sign or um I would hear like a bit of conversation I would like put it in my notes app and then kind of accumulate uh, sentences that way and then once in a while I would just kind of sit down and see where like the consistency was or if there was something happening there so that's um yeah how I usually write to kind of collect notes and then I kind of distill poems from them in that way so it's not usually like in response to like a specific event or you know you know like I'm having this feeling I'm gonna write a poem about it it's more like accumulated throughout your life kind of thing um, yeah I think so but then at the same time I do like when I'm having an experience I do kind of pay attention attention to details or if someone says something I, I do always note it down and I think it's become easier with you know smartphones because in the past even as a teenager I used to be like that asshole who I would take or bring out like a notebook and like mid-conversation start scribbling something and look really pretentious and dumb and like friends would tell me Nadia is looking for attention again yeah. but now yeah. I can just kind of take out my phone and pretend I'm responding to a text or something and it's actually me kind of noting whatever my friend or whatever just said and they don't know until years later when the, when the poem gets published <laughs> <laughs> um but you also write prose right so but right to my knowledge almost all of your prose is in dutch yeah that's true i keep it separated because it, it, i always wanted to be a poet and that's what i really mm. enjoy but then as like a, a dutch person writing in english like there's no grants i can apply for there's nothing that and also it's pretty hard to get published to begin with because i don't live in the cities where like literature happens in those languages mm -hmm. so and I really I did want to make my money also writing because I used to have all kinds of office jobs and yeah and it was really I, I came to a point when I thought I want a different life I don't want to be in an office all, all day for a week every week and then um, write in the evenings and then collapse so I decided, okay, if I want to make money writing, I have to write in Dutch. So I'm now writing reviews and articles and essays in Dutch. And then that's um, where I get, well, nowadays I get my income from, but it's like a five year, about well, four years ago, I started doing it. And then now I, it's okay enough to make a living. So I'm really happy about that, but my heart is still with poetry and that's what I write in English. So I'm actually, this is, I guess I'm the most proud of this book that I've written so far because Dark Hour, like I said, I kind of said it jokingly, but I do feel it's kind of like my baby poems when I was still mm -hmm. kind of figuring out how I wanted to write. And now with this book, I feel like, okay, I, I, now I, I'm i kind of, I know where, where I am. And it's also something that I do because I like it and not because I have to make, like make rent. So that's a, I think a very vital difference. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you, <laughs> do you ever, have you ever written poetry in Dutch or like how did how did you make this decision like that that, that poetry was going to be in English um well very long well I kind of I grew up with like the English language even though I didn't speak it I didn't start speaking English like aloud until I was 19 hence like my accent but I, I started reading and writing in English when I was six or something mm. because all kind all the the culture that came to me was in English yeah and when I was 11 or maybe even younger I saw I think it was like the very early days of like GeoCities and, yeah. I, and I built like blogs and things like fan pages for the things uh, that I like like Cartoon Network I had like a Cartoon Network fan page and stuff like that <laughs> um, and I would write about that and and, and then later I, I don't know why really I, I, I just started writing poems started publishing them Mm. And they used to be really silly, like, like actually like really ch children's poems, like rhyming stuff and about objects coming to life or whatever I thought was funny at the time. And then when I was 15, 16, I had like my, my goth phase. And then I went full like Sylvia Plath um, emulator. <laughs> so mm -hmm. 
uh, that's yeah that's how it went and so when you started writing poetry what was your like did you start publishing it on like online like on tumblr and stuff like how did yeah. you I think this kind of still predates Tumblr. I think I had like, there was this hosting service called Freewebs that I used and yeah. I had like no visitors. So it was also a bit like a diary of sorts. And then later indeed Tumblr and I had like a, a .tk address like everyone had in 2005, like, oh, my own domain, I .tk. Uh, so I did that, but also at one point, so I used to not have, like I come from like a working class background and it was for a long time, I didn't know that studying literature was an option. Um, so I worked, I started working when I was 16, I worked at a pharmacy. And when I was, by the time I was 19, I thought, I don't want to, I don't want my life to stop here at this pharmacy, I want something else. And then I learned that with like the Dutch education system, like you could kind of work your way up and then I could study literature. And I thought, wow, like I could study, I could like work with the thing I love. And then I started going towards that. And that's also why at 19, I could finally start like speaking this language and this literature that I've been uh, looking at uh, for years. And yeah, that's when it really changed. And I thought, okay, now I can start working with it. But it's also when it got frustrating because then it wasn't like a, a playful thing anymore. I had to actually improve and show my work and get critiqued and have my my ego smashed like <laughs> everything like that but it was all all for the better though but it's, it was like a process would you say that when you when you started writing poetry when you were a teenager did you like read poetry at that time or was it more just like I have some feelings I want to write down like what did you like know what you're doing or like did you have references that you were like following or yeah yeah and they're really embarrassing I was really into like Victorian poets <laughs> that makes sense <laughs> yeah but, but, but I, thought, I think it's so embarrassing in hindsight because I don't know when I look back because I feel like a lot of I don't know I've, I've met like students who are like I want to be like Shakespeare and I think oh god no that's not the way to go I don't know I can't judge but that I was really I think, no, I think another a big thing was, I think when I was 11, I, I think I, I found like a Tennyson poem on like a, a GeoCities website and I could read it and I, and, I, and I could see it was like an 1830s poem or something. And I thought, wow, like I taught myself English and I can read old stuff with this language. And it was like really interesting to me that I could read kind of historical poems in a language that, I, that my parents couldn't speak. And I, I got a really like adrenaline kick out of that, like, oh my God, there's a whole world out there waiting. And uh, that's, I think, where the appeal of like more historical text in English came from, which helped with like certain literature. But then when you're actually like writing to get published, it doesn't help you at all. <laughs> so it's actually, it was really good that I spent so much time online because then later, I think I Googled, I actually Googled like poetry one day and I arrived at like the poetry magazine website and it had like some poems online from the latest issue. And I started like scrolling and, I, and, and it was like, like being rinsed, like mentally, oh my goodness, this is also poetry. It's like just talking, but it's like clever and it doesn't have to rhyme. And that's when it changed. And that's when I started writing poetry for real, I think, like yeah. proper poetry, not like, um, uh, the raven ripoff or, <laughs> or like, or like, a, a, I don't know, like a, a a failed sonnet or something. <laughs> and did you know anybody in real life who like was interested in poetry or writing or anything like that? No, not at all. So yeah. it was like heaven when I went to, when I finally got to go to uni at, at 20 or 21, because I had to like work and, and study a bit before that, before I could like take the exam to get in. And um, it was like, oh my God, all these people read for fun. We can talk about books. We can talk about, <laughs> I don't know. It was, I was so happy. It was, yeah, it was like, oh God, like finally I'm where I need to be. But then like, especially Dutch literature, it's very stiff and classist and also quite like anachronistic in a way I feel because even like young people today, they still have to read like authors from the 1940s. And I guess mm. it's the way in many countries or language areas, but 
Um, so what happens is when other kind of Dutch poets my age, they would all be very much in this mm, very kind of very theoretical or theological poetry and not so much like, like 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 poems that were written as if the 21st century hadn't happened yet like yeah. we're still like in the 70s or something and that's also why i started kind of saving up to go to like london and new york because i thought that's where all the interesting people are who are like writing con actual contemporary stuff that's not kind of a remix of the the 50s and 60s and 70s yeah i think that i mean i yeah i also had an kind of similar experience where I didn't actually know somehow that there were people who were alive who were writing that like I just like didn't and like I don't know why like I knew that there were obviously I knew that there were like famous writers who were like publishing new books and stuff but I did not ever think that there could be people who were just like normal people who were just like doing it because they wanted to for themselves and like figuring it out like the hell we do like I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but did you also come to literature via the internet then? Did you like a Tumblr or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, like I was writing things, but I didn't know that anybody else was. Like, I, yeah, I really, I'd never met anybody else who, who was doing that and who was like actually going to share it with other people. Like, I feel like, you know, you always know those like boys who are like, Oh yes, I write. I write a lot, but I don't show anyone. Like it's just oh, for me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you're like, oh, okay. Um, and and Goodness. certain people like that kind of often think that they're like better than the other people, right? Because like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, I'm gonna write the next new um, great American novel. I just have to find <laughs> the time for it. But one day I will. They're not like that. Like I yeah. feel like every. I don't know, every 20 year old knows someone like that and older as well. But then hopefully it's at one point they start seeing reality. But the, yeah. I'm curious, if I can ask you a question, who is okay. the, the, like the first like proper, like not like proper, but like the first writer that you met, like, like not like a big famous one, but one that actually kind of made you feel like, oh, wow, I'm in a, I'm, I'm alive in a world where people write. What's like the first person that you met that kind of made you feel that way? No. Well, I don't know if she, I don't know if she was the first person I met, but like the person who like who had the biggest like impact on me, like from the initial meeting was Sarah Jean Alexander. I mean, and we're mm -hmm. still like best friends, but it was really like we she I lived in Toronto, she lived in Baltimore, and she was like, "Do you want to come and stay with me?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay." Uh, and that's really far. Like it's so I took a bus like for like 12 hours to go to Baltimore like not knowing her at all just knowing <laughs> just like having read each other's work and stuff and then uh she picked me up from wherever the bus station was uh oh, that's where the bus dropped us up dropped me off and then uh I just remember like I got in the car and we started talking about I think we were already working on some project together we started talking about it and it was just like like so just immediately was flowing like okay we we just and, and I was, remember thinking like I've never had a conversation like this before but somehow it's like it's already been happening forever so wow. I think it's also been really cute how you go like off a 12-hour bus drive you're like in the car you're like okay poetry <laughs> I love <Yeah>. that <laughs> it's really, it's really yeah. sweet That's yeah really nice. what about you because did the well, did you, did you first meet people in Amsterdam or was it more when you went to other places first? Um, it was in Amsterdam um, in my literature program. So I think maybe it's also nice to clarify or handy, like convenient to clarify that um, in the Netherlands, you don't have MFAs. You, you don't have, mm. well, I think maybe in the past three years or five years, you have had them. But when I was studying, you could study like literature and linguistics, but you could not study creative writing. Mm. But I studied English literature and we got like our Beowulf and all of that. And then one day I met uh, a, 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 an assistant professor, or professor in, um, in, in modernism. Uh, her name is Jane Luti. And she mentioned, oh, I'm a poet. And I thought, what? She's a poet. And, and she had like an actual book out and all of that. And I was so uh, impressed. And I'm like, oh my goodness, like, 
a real um a real poet and i was so inspired by her and i was became like a big fan and uh, and she was has been always been very um kind and nurturing and um when I actually in my second year at uni i think i found my my people who also wanted to be writers and we founded this uh writers group called the amsterdam writers guilds like i did not think of the name but i think it's really cute still <laughs> um and jane really helped us with that as well and even today like she's really supportive and and i think that was like a very um good experience to kind of see someone and have them be approachable and think oh, this this is writing as well just hanging out and talking and you don't have to be this kind of i don't know i think i, I kind of had this vision of, of writers being very intimidating um i self-isolating people who are like living on a hill and doing really important things or whatever and she kind of called me to earth on that one in, in a really nice and good way so what did you do in the guild <laughs> like as oh we did <laughs> 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 it actually was really good. we actually call it like the guild among ourselves this is like the way we call it um well, we uh, we critiqued each other's work because Jane, she's done the, the Iowa Writers Workshop. So she knew like she knew how MFAs work and she kind of taught us like, how do you actually practice your writing? How do you get better? And so, well, the key is to have other people read it and tell them what they think uh, from like a technical perspective or whatnot. And that was, of course, really uh, intimidating in a way. But because we were all friends and we felt really comfortable with each other, um, we started doing that. We sort of actually the university was really uh, generous in this respect as well because they gave us like rooms to use in the evenings. So we could all meet and um, yeah, so we critiqued each other's work and then also we did events around town um, because we were students. We could I don't know it was kind of attractive for bars to um, like host our events, even though like sometimes no one came but ourselves and also no one wants to listen to like poetry on a Friday night. But they thought, oh, they're students. They they drink a lot. Like, let's host them. Yeah. And they will they will buy many beers, and um, and that's what we did. And but the nice thing is, all of us actually do work in publishing now in one way or another, or like translators or editors or writers. So that's uh, so it all worked out. The guilt was good for some for many things. Like when it's when I say good for something, it sounds like I'm belittling, but it was like a great time. It was wonderful. Yeah, and do, are you still active? In the guild. <laughs> no, no, and like I think when we all stopped studying, we and we all got jobs. Mm. It became too intense to kind of read eight tech eight texts and like critique them on a monthly basis or to organize events. So we all went our separate ways, and and capitalism got the better of us. Mm. What's um, what's your like process now for when you're editing your work? Like who? Do you send it out to people? Do you like meet with anyone like in person to go through the poems? Like what, what happens? Um, my English, my, my poetry, I don't really show it to anyone at all. Mm -hmm. I, I perform it a lot. And then right. usually I kind of wait, people will tell me, oh, that worked or, and then the mm -hmm. poems that they don't comment on, I think, hmm, maybe that wasn't that good of a poem. Mm. Um, and also I usually before I compile a manuscript, like in the years before that, I submit poems to magazines and journals and online places. And then if poems get placed, I think, OK, so and usually when a poem gets accepted, someone will say something about it, too. And I think, OK, so this is what worked or and then I kind of built the manuscripts based from the poems that were published and then the ones that that I, I just like myself or I think they kind of fit the world of the book. Yeah. yeah. But then in Dutch, it's different. I get edited a lot in Dutch and, I, and my Dutch prose at the press I'm at, I, I also write um, nonfiction, like, like, and also now fiction in Dutch and that gets heavily edited. Also because even though I'm Dutch, my Dutch is not very good because I studied English and um, we, we, I'm fluent, but like grammatically, my grammar yeah, is yeah, yeah. bad. So I have to get um, edited a lot in that uh, respect. Yeah. And how much do you like, I guess I'm talking about the poetry now rather than the prose, but like how much do you care like what other people think of it? 
Like with the poetry, I don't care in, at all. That's that's also mm. why I prefer the poetry because I feel more com confident in it. I'm I'm quite insecure in Dutch, and also um, I think poetry is kind of it allows you to be a bit more mysterious because it's kind of like this alchemy of experiences. You don't have to be, you don't have any responsibility to be like fully transparent but like, or, or like only share facts. And then with nonfiction, if you're like writing an essay, you have to like check your facts and make sure your argument is all, all right. And you don't say anything like stupid. And that makes me like quite insecure. I, I love writing essays but it also comes with like insecurity and like knowing that I'll be like proofread and people will say, maybe you should like double check this or add a bit here or there. And um, with poetry, I, I don't feel that responsibility at all. Yeah. And that's really liberating and also fun. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm not scared when I'm writing poetry and, even, and, and also when people think it's bad or they don't like it, I don't really care that much. And that's a great, that's a very powerful feeling to have to legitimately not care. Yeah. And when you when your first nonfiction book came out in Dutch, what's called Kleinzeer? Yeah, yeah. Right. Um yeah. it was like it seemed to be very well received, right? Like it it was like a bigger deal for you probably than any other publishing experience you've had before. Like what was that like? Well absolutely, because it was like with a like a, a like a commercial press and I love Dostoevsky wannabe they're there but they're an indie press so even when it comes to promotion and stuff they're like here's your book and if you want to do something you can do it yourself which, which I mm. really appreciate because it gives me a lot of freedom as well that they don't mm. ask anything of me that I don't want to do which I really I really appreciate as well but then with a the commercial press there's like a whole journey like, like months before the book comes out like it gets planned of you have to do an interview here. We have to do this. We're going to submit your book to these newspapers. And I, I, I thought it was really intimidating because I thought, oh God, now I have to, I have to sell a book now. How do I do this? I'm not used to this. Mm -hmm. um, but now in hindsight, I also like it because, and of course I've talked to other like, like writers who've been publishing many books that came out with commercial presses and the end, you know, your book like does the rounds for three months. And then like the new season of book comes, books come. Right. So even if a book is not well received or if it doesn't do anything, three months later, the whole market is different again. And, and I think it's also a good lesson in humility because it's not like, it means you're not that important. Like the, like the book I wrote, is like a really personal book. It's about the, the illness I had as a kid and how that shaped me and also my, um, my teenage years. That's also why I turned to English because I spent so much time by myself because I was sick. I, I, I kind of had to entertain myself and that's how the internet and learning English where that came in. So I, it felt really like vulnerable. And I thought, oh God, what if people think I'm this or that or if I'm not being a drama queen or whatever, which is also what clients here is like a Dutch equivalent of drama queen. Mm -hmm. And, but that didn't happen at all. And then I thought, okay, great. And all my secrets are all my, my childhood trauma is in the bookshop and still alive. And now there's another, now here comes another novel or whatever. And that, that's really good, I think, to kind of feel you can write the most personal stuff and, and like um, and, and be seen writing personal stuff. And it's okay. You can, other things will pass by. And, you, and even if there's like a scandal or controversy, something else will come by soon enough. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's easy to feel scared that like oh, I can't share this information because but then like what, what will happen nothing happens <laughs> yeah which, which can also be like a detriment and I think that's like a big like disappointment of like the whole me too conversation it's like oh mm. you can have like a lot of controversy and then nothing changes so right. it kind of goes both ways like for for like yeah. sensitive people it's like phew like I, I got to like share my feelings and still be accepted but then for the assholes who like abuse people it's like oh I abused someone I got grilled in the media and then now I'm free to go to my island or whatever so yeah that's true um but I guess one thing that's really impressive about you is like how many books you've published how many books you've written like um so you have the poetry books but like yeah like you you started Dark Hour your first poetry book was made up of was it three chat books it was yeah, a series yeah, yeah. right yeah um and and then you 
then you've made them into a collection then you've got this new one you've also got like a your book in Dutch and then you have another one coming out right yeah Um, yeah like how how do you write so much how do you (laughs) and not only that not only how do you write so much but how do you how do you decide like I'm gonna how do you stay motivated to just like keep making more books like to to go through the whole process because it can be hard right yeah it is but also I really love it like it gives me when I'm maybe it's going to sound really cliche but it but it is true maybe that's also why it's a cliche but when I'm writing I feel really in the present and usually like I'm kind of an anxious person so usually I'm either living in the past or in the future and I'm worried and I worry a lot but then when I'm writing it's actually like it relaxes me like if like my shoulder has been aching for example I will feel it when I'm writing or when, when I'm done because I'm like oh wow I actually relaxed my body for a bit there and um so I, I really enjoy the process of writing but also I'm a really project oriented person even when I'm not um like writing books like even like my chores like I write down everything I have to do every day and then I tick it off like oh do my groceries like do the laundry and I think oh I, I did my projects for the day so I do that with books as well and sometimes I think oh I want to write a book um about submission or I want to write a book about loneliness um and then I think okay I really like before I die I want to have like a collection of thoughts like a book about this like it's important to me so that's kind of how I work and then sometimes it ends up ends up being a lot but I don't know what it's going to be like in 10 years because maybe I'm publishing a lot now and then maybe one point I'll have shared everything and then maybe I'll I won't do it anymore (laughs) I doubt it. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I could have like a dry yeah. spell of like 10 years and I don't know, maybe I'll pick up like, I don't know, a third language or I don't know, do something. Yeah, maybe I, yeah I want to learn to drive a car. I, I, I can drive. That's a thing. Like if, when I get like my writer retirement or my sabbatical, I want mm-hmm. to st- dr- learn to drive a car. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll probably write a book about learning to drive a car. Probably. Yeah, <laughs> true. Fair enough. <laughs> um you what what other language would you like to learn you just said yeah uh polish i think that's a really cool language and also i, I really love russian as well but i think it's more difficult because you've got like this really like alphabet and i know that sound wise there's more rhythm to it that you have to learn and then the meaning differs so i think like being like a, a, at the age i am now and kind of knowing myself and like the time and energy i can put into it I think Polish, I could still, because it's maybe still like, like even alphabet wise, it's still close enough to like the languages that I know, German, and also I think Spanish is beautiful. It sounds, yeah. everything sounds cool in Spanish. Yeah, it's true. And also there, there are a lot of great Spanish poets, like young poets and a lot of like interesting stuff happening there. So I always feel like I want to be able to read it in Spanish like yeah yeah um yeah why Polish though is that for a reason or I just think it sounds really beautiful and I don't know I think it's I don't know there's something maybe it's also I grew up with a lot of Polish around me because a lot of in my in the the town I grew up uh, a lot of uh, people from Poland came there to work for a season and then they went back home so I've always heard a lot of like Polish uh, around me as a kid. And just the other day I was thinking, I was actually thinking about, oh, what if I could speak it? Because I, I just hear it often. And, and also I think it would be cool. Like I have to be honest with my friends. I like to gossip a lot. And then the past year, like we've been outside so much. We've been gossiping, like walking in the parks with our coffee. And I think, shit, like we could, we're, we're, everyone speaks Dutch and English. We need like a code language that not every Dutch person can understand. And one of my good friends, actually, she's fluent in Russian, but that's, and she told me it's, it's a very difficult language to learn. So maybe it's also where I think Polish, because maybe we could do like a Polish-Russian mix and then gossip. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> that's a true reason, probably. So you need to like organize a group of your friends to like all learn Polish together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, that's basically that. <laughs> You need to go, like, you need to organize, like, a group trip, like, an intensive workshop in Poland. Maybe you need to go for, like, a month. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I, I would not object, especially after the year that we've had. I, I wouldn't mind a nice trip. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think that would be funny, especially if the, the purpose was basically just so that you can talk about people around you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really devoted to the cause. Like, let's learn a new language so we can um, gossip in private <laughs> and outside. It, I would, I would like to read that book. Like, if you were writing, I don't, know, if it was in Polish and then somehow it was translated <laughs> into oh, English. Oh goodness! But that is a thing, though, where you do kind of gossip in writing. I do sometimes I write like like essays in, in Dutch about like experiences I've had with like American friends. And I think what if if what if they use Google Translate? What what if it gets like uploaded online and they can like translate it and they can see like, oh God, like she recorded this whole she kind of made like a story of this conversation or something. And yeah. What do you um did you <laughs> I don't know how to ask this. What's <laughs> what's your experience of america been like or like american writers like did you i don't i feel like for a lot of us like who are not from there like we 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 read a lot of of american literature but also feel a little bit removed and like different and like it's very particular yeah (laughs) and and i don't know what but i know that you've spent time there and like done a lot of readings there and stuff like have you found that but what i like about there's, there's so much of it I like how there's not one American literature. You have like from the West Coast or East Coast or that city or that place. And you have all these little communities and especially coming from a very small country where basically the whole literary world is based around Amsterdam and a bit like the smaller cities around that. Uh, It's really interesting to me to see that you have like these whole scenes and journals and presses and conferences and worlds all around this continent. so that I really, in, I was just kind of enchanted by that um, kind of the idea that there was so much to choose from. And also because of that, that you don't have to please one audience. Um, because I think that's one thing that I dislike about Dutch culture. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very grateful that I, that I get to be part of it, like writing wise. Yeah. But it is also very, there's like four newspapers that you kind of have to get a good review in. And there's a few festivals and a few prizes. And, but if you fall outside of that, you're pretty much invisible. And, um, and I think that's quite sad, kind of knowing kind of over the profession of writing, how much love goes into it. And I think I really enjoy the idea or kind of seeing that in the States that if you were, if you didn't really fit in one place, there would be another place for you. And I think that was really uh, hopeful. And to be honest, it's, it's more, you can see it more now in the Netherlands as well, also thanks to the internet and also thanks to, well, actually not always, sometimes it also, the Dutch market, like the literary and art market is kind of Americanizing. Right. So what you see, if a book comes out in the States five years ago, then now like Dutch people start to emulate that and try to make like a Dutch version of it. Right. So, if, like, so it's not always like good for like original ideas because I think, oh, wow, if it's successful in America, we can make like a Dutch version and also make our, I don't know, do our little thing. Um, but I do like how it gets, it, Dutch literature is getting more experimental and more um, community driven rather than this is the canon of Dutch literature and this is um, what we have to do. We have to like honor this tradition or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... And yeah, what do you, I guess like that's because there aren't that many people relatively who speak Dutch, right? So it's, yeah, it's no, really, absolutely. it's a different situation. And what about translation? Like, do you ever translate things or is that, are you like interested in doing that and like introducing other Dutch writers to an English audience or? I well, know. I tried that, but the thing is, I think this is like a trap that I fell into, is in thinking, oh, I speak two languages fluently, therefore I can translate. Mm. But especially with poetry, it's not that, it, it's very hard to translate, to actually make a translation. It's not like a reinterpretation, but an actual translation. And I did take like an, um, I did like a, a, a translation course, but I failed, I, I did really bad at it. I, I got like, like, like the Dutch like grading system is like one out of 10. 
like mm-hmm. one to ten, and I got a three. So I was oh, that wow. bad. I was really <laughs> bad at it because I was I was not really translating. I was like interpreting. So I was hmm. like, okay, so this is that word, and now I can take this metaphor, make it a bit like this. And they're like, no, no, you're not trans. You're making a whole new text out of this. So I'm really bad at it. So I will not. Uh, I, I know very talented translators, so they can do that and do a great job. And I will not ruin anyone's beautiful work with my uh, vague um, and arrogant interpretations. <laughs> I hope that Kleinzer gets translated into English because I want to read it. But I haven't been able to. <laughs> yeah, I, the, 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 it, it, I hope it will be. There's been like plans about it and plans for it. Uh, but but like to be honest, to get like in the English language market, it's very difficult because it's such because the scale is so different and the stakes are also different because of that. It's um, and I think also for people who write in English or who want to publish in English, like most of them have like an agent, and in Dutch you don't really have like you just go you can like just walk over to the publishing house and say hey here read my text. That's basically how it goes. You can actually physically just go there. And I think with English, it's a bit more mysterious and it's like, mm, you have to be there and there and there. So it's kind of, it, it takes much longer. So I don't know exactly when that will happen, but I do yeah. know that um, ideas are flowing about it. Plans right. are being made. And what do you, um, I guess we talked about the Guild and like your early introduction to um, the Amsterdam, like writing scene or community, but like, what is it? I know that now is like a little bit different, but in general, do you recommend it as a place to be a writer? Hmm. I think not. Well, I really, I think it's really a really friendly environment because the stakes are lower. I mean, even if you're like a bestseller, you're a bestselling author in Dutch if you sell 5,000 copies and which is like really, which is good, but it doesn't make you a living. So most people work and very few people have like that superstar um, idea. And I think because English is read so much, um, some people really kind of go, but I want to sell a million copies of this book. And you don't have that at all in Dutch. No one, everyone knows we're never going to be rich from our book. Maybe, maybe 10 people can do it and like, and like living today, you know, like that. So it's really friendly. It's quite cute, I think, but I'm not like in a, derogatory way like in a in a really nice warm way but the thing with Amsterdam is it's been gentrified a lot so it's economically it's a very difficult city to live a bit similar to London I think London and Amsterdam are very similar like housing wise Mm. also what I mentioned before that I was living with like six other people and um so you have to make like a lot of concessions kind of for your own um lifestyle like do I want to have my own place to sleep and eat, or do I want, do I want to be in the city, or do I want to commute two hours every day? So you have to make those decisions. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what about like in terms of event? Like normally, are there like a lot of readings or like places to do readings? You know, like that kind of thing. Or is- oh my goodness, there's one place. Like the next time you are in Amsterdam, I have to like show you. It's like a, like right in the middle of like the red light district, and it's called Purdue, and they have like a like a, a big sign outside the door. It says like poetry experiment. So it's like <laughs> in, in the middle of like the red light district. You have this poetry experiment, and it's like a bookshop, and they and they said they they have like poetry in all languages, mm-hmm. and they also have an event space. And every Friday night they have like an evening where the people that work there, they invite poets, um, both both local and international, and they do events. And they also host book launches and stuff like that. And I love that place uh, because it has like that cute kind of community, kind of Dutch literature. It's like, oh, everyone can come and we're all like, um, uh, so it has that, but it's also like fun and they do kind of out there things sometimes. And the, but then also they can have like a really, I mean, and Boyer did events there and Eileen Miles, so they have that, but then they also have kind of, you know, writing students coming in and I really like that. Oh, that's so cool. I love poetry experiment. <laughs> yeah, but also it's, it's, it looks like so random, like you're like, 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 a, like, I don't know, like a condom store over there and then like the red lights and like a beer tasting, whatever, and then like poetry experiment. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. 
I could recommend it to anyone ever going to Amsterdam. It's on the Kloveniers Burgwal. Okay. It's in the middle of the city. <laughs> cool. I'm definitely going to come when we, well, I guess I can now, right? I guess we're allowed to travel. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah but it's still a bit like there's not many events. Like most events are still being live streamed because mm -hmm. we cannot really gather still. Like, right. And then it's still kind of illegal to gather in like huge groups indoors. Right. I see. So do you have plans to like do a launch for your new book or like what will you be able to do? Uh, yeah, next week I'm doing a, a launch at another, actually another really lovely bookstore in the red light district called San Serif. And that's more art books uh, oriented, but they also do a lot of poetry and they usually have events on Thursday nights. Um, and I also really recommend San Serif to anyone ever wanting to visit Amsterdam, by the way. Um, so I'm doing a short reading there. But also, I don't like because the book was supposed to come out like last year. I kind of I'm already moving on to other projects as well. So I don't want to do like 100 readings of the poems that I've been reading for three years. Mm. So it'll be like an informal thing where we all kind of hang out before the summer yeah. starts. And then I hope the book would just find its way into the world naturally. And yeah, and also I don't want to do, kind of the past year has also made me reconsider kind of social life in general and that I don't want like my social life to revolve around like events as much I just want to be able to informally gather without there having to be like a spectacle of sorts so I think I want to spend more time just hanging out with people and maybe talking about poetry like what we're doing now instead of kind of going and having like a whole thing about you, you go on at eight, you go like a quarter past eight, and then uh, we have to be out of here by 11. Like, I, I think I don't want, I want to do less of that, I think, <laughs> just because it's stressful. <laughs> yeah. And, and you are also in a book club, right? In Amsterdam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what, is your, what is your book club like? No, it, it's, well, I love it because we read quite like commercial titles <laughs> and uh, but but also I read books that I, like we read like Lucinda Riley for example, and it, it was actually a good kind of reality check because I found myself think oh wow a big bestselling whatever but it's really nice when you know you're gonna talk about it in like a book club and then you actually start reading it differently and I actually really enjoyed uh, Lucinda Riley's um, a book and I was also really shocked when I heard that she passed away last month I said oh no like I was so it was really sad and of course it's sad when anyone dies but especially after, after having that surprise um connection with the series thinking oh my goodness it will never be another uh sister book um but also we read like biographies and and for me it's been also a really good um introduction to Dutch uh, literature as well just to read kind of novels or writers that I don't know, because I still usually read in English. Um, yeah, and I really enjoy that. It's, it's, I think it's nice, that the good thing about a book club, I think is that everyone, and also people that you maybe don't really know, gets to pick what to read and you get to kind of challenge your own biases a bit. And I think that's always really good. Yeah, it is, it, yeah. It's so easy to just only read the things that you like, you just really want to read right and yeah it's good to be forced into like just opening you know like it's like opening your mind but it's also just that you don't really generally you don't really want to buy something that you might not like right like so but then I always find in the poetry book club like that I tend to like <laughs> the, the things that we pick together like even if I didn't expect that I would or, you know, I learned something or I'm always like happy that I've read it, even if I didn't, even if it wasn't my favorite thing ever. But yeah. yeah. And especially also when you didn't hear like friends or acquaintances kind of talk about it enthusiastically. Yeah. And you kind of get to approach this book from like another perspective. Yeah. I think that's really lovely as well when you get to be introduced to a book outside of your own little headspace. Yeah. 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 Um, so you're going to do a launch but it, but then you're moving on from your event oriented life <laughs> <laughs> well to be honest I still want to do some stuff in, in London I have a lot of friends in London because like mm. Amsterdam London it's like one hour it's, it's like really close mm. and but I haven't been there since November 2019 
So yeah. I do want to do like a launch there too, and maybe read to, with, with friends there. But then I wouldn't be reading like alone. Like with a launch, it's like, okay, I'm going to read some poems. And then, I don't yeah. know, it's, it's like about that book. But I want to do maybe next like some events just with that group of friends and or different groups of friends. And then just present the work that we've been writing the past two years together. I would really enjoy that. Like Dominic Jakely, for example, he's um, uh, an English uh, poet and publisher he, he runs hotel like the hotel uh, magazine online and oh, yeah. we did like a really nice uh, soundscape together for montes press radio and oh, cool. i would really love to like read with him physically as well uh, once it gets possible uh, again so that's like one thing that i really want to do yeah yeah i feel also like i really want to like, hopefully if we can like later in the summer i want to like do some readings and like listen to everybody read and see like what everyone's been doing like kind of want to go around some different places and just like I don't know hear everybody do their thing because it's been so yeah. long it, what have you been writing actually I'm curious <laughs> it's not I'll tell you after we start recording okay okay, <laughs> okay. Um, I get some gossip I get the special knowledge <laughs> um but do you want to read from I fail to swoon Oh, sure. Oh, wait, is this what you're going to read from or is it? Yeah, 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 else? yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not like anti like reading from the book. I actually, I'm really happy with these poems. Um, and I'll read a, a short selection, just like five minutes. Like the, because the poems are so short, I think it kind of drags on if you read too many. Can I ask, was the cover your your idea or like how did the... Yeah. Yeah, it looked Yeah, great. it's I, actually... Um, so during in 2018 like i had like a brief like i fell in love with someone like really badly but then uh, they didn't like me and i think it was their birthday or something and i had like a a sunflower delivered to them and then i think at some point i don't know that they planted it or something and they sent me a picture and it was kind of like wilted and I thought, oh my goodness. <laughs> and I wrote, and actually a lot of poems in the book, well, not, not a lot, maybe three, are about this person. So when I thought about a cover, I thought I want that wilted sunflower on there. And it's also kind of my revenge because I sent the book to that person and I, 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 got, I, I, got, I got the reaction that I wanted. So I feel, I feel really like in my, it, like it was a good reaction, but yeah. So that's like another thing. It, it wasn't like a revenge thing or whatever. Okay, yeah, so yeah. on that note, I will read. <laughs> and also, yeah, it's good to know. So these are not COVID poems, even if they're all about like seclusion. <laughs> well, not all of them, but a few. All right. Sicker than dogs. I'm so cosmopolitan. I've been to hell and back. I want to stay at home, drink tea, grow old, etc. I keep my options and curtains open because I have nothing to lose. All the windows in this room are going to betray me. I failed to swoon. That wasn't very smart of you. You need to start seeing things the way I do. Here, let me blind you. My surfaces, my services. He asked for pictures of my room. I showed him my chair, my bedposts, my curtains, my carpet. Before you ask, no, they don't match. Everything goth is perverse. Who can permit themselves to glorify darkness and pain, to beautify darkness and pain? I can do nothing with darkness and pain. I have too much of it. It is unwieldy and ugly and financially unviable. And it is also mine, which is worse. 
What does a thief do with that which is theirs? I mean, morally and legally theirs. My poor subjectivity. I can give it away. I'm too selfish and secretive, too mercenary and arrogant, too clumsy and weak and dumb. I'm simply too full of darkness and pain, glorious darkness and pain, beautiful darkness and pain. New York loves you. I once bought a dog and then the dog owned me. Capital yields like that. Love too. God's dick was soft when he made you. Flattery will get you nowhere except my house, my bed, and my life. The Emperor's New News. They're setting off firecrackers. They're setting off firecrackers in my street and in the hallway of my house. My body is lying to me. It's telling me there's a war going on, but there's no war going on at all. I'll read one more. In the new year, I will be stone cold. It's New Year's Day. I found an old lover's underwear in my closet. I smelled it, didn't feel a thing. In the new year, I'm going to be stone cold. In the new year, I'm going to be tough as nails. Every day will be garbage day and none of my poems will be sentimental. That swoon. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. I, I, I feel like you went uh, into the poetry zone when you were reading. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I you? always do that. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so everyone should read this. I failed to swoon. And um, yeah, I hope. Um, thanks for talking to me. I'm, I really enjoyed that. And um, yeah, thank yeah. you so much. It was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully next time we can do it in person with like a bottle of wine and lots of friends around too. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you for another profound experience of poetry. <laughs> thank you. Bye everyone.